the basically, the main important thing, guys, which we've already kind of covered, is first of all, I think it's important for you guys to know what the initial period was. So I gave you guys what the initial period was for cosine. It went up to 1, down to negative 1. It had a period of 2 pi, and it had a x scale of pi halves. And we graphed this in class so you guys would have a better understanding of what the graph looked like. Does everybody agree doing that initial period? I provided to you that in class, right? And we actually even practiced doing them ourselves so we know where the graph came from. Um, so now you have different numbers. So now our amplitude is going to change. Our period and x scaling is going to change. So the main important thing which you're going to want to do for all of these problems, if it asks or doesn't, is find the period, amplitude, and x scale. Then if there's any other transformations, we find those first. So the first thing is the amplitude. That's the absolute value of 0.5, which is just going to be 0.5. Right? Yes? OK. So instead of the graph going up to 1, now the graph is going to go up to 0.5, or 1 half, right? OK. I'll just do 0.5 because that's how they used it in the problem. All right, then the next thing is to figure out the period. Well, the period, we need to take 2 pi divided by b. So what is my b in this case? 3. 2 pi divided by 3. Can I simplify that any further? No, so that's it. Phi found the period in the thing. Um, the next thing, though, would be to find the x scale. The x scale, if you guys remember in your notes, which I told you to write down, was the period divided by 4. Right? So therefore, I need to take 2 pi over 3 and divide that by 4. So again, I could do the same thing. Multiply by my reciprocal, which would be 1 fourth. So my scaling is going to be pi over 6. Does everybody see how I got pi over 6? I just multiply, I divided a fraction by a number, got pi over 6. So instead of my scales going by pi halves, I'm going to do this, pi over 6. And I asked you guys to do two periods, pi over 6. So we know that a period is going to be 2 pi over 3. So I'm going to be pi over 6, 2 pi over 6. 3 pi over 6. Until you get good with fractions, you can just count them like this if you'd like to. 4 pi over 6. 5 pi over 6. 6 pi over 6. 7 pi over 6. 8 pi over 6. And you guys see how I could keep on continuing based on my x scale, right? However, once you kind of get a little bit more familiar with this, we don't really, we don't ever going to write 2 pi over 6, right? That's going to be simplified as pi over. Three. This is simplified to pi halves. Do you guys ever do you guys see that? This is 2 pi over 3. That is 5 pi over 6. 6 pi over 6 just gets reduced to 6. 7 pi over 6. And then 8 pi over 6 reduces to 4 thirds. So if you're getting used to fractions, I would just do the x scale, just add the numerator and keep the denominator the same, and then simplify it at the end. Once you kind of get used to this, though, you can start doing that in your head. So now we know what cosine looks like. It starts at the maximum for the initial period. Then the next critical point is the x-intercept. The next critical point is negative 1. Then it goes back to x-intercept. And then it goes up to its maximum. Do you guys see how the graph is exactly the same? Yes? The only difference is the amplitude is different and the period is different. Now it only takes it, the time it takes for it to complete a cycle is 2 pi over 3, where the initial period of the parent graph is 2 pi. And then can we just continue this on? Yeah, so I just continue my process. And then you can keep on going by I only asked for two periods. So you could have done a period, 
and another period, or you could have done a period here and then a period over there. But I always want the initial period and then to um, move on from there. And that's all I ask you guys to do for your homework. Now I know we didn't, I didn't show 